some of you I had to be extra creative with um, because some of you are just popped into this group on a on a different um, subject matter. So um, hopefully everything will work out. I am back today for part two of lesson preparation. You all um, were supposed to bring examples of your language objectives that you taught this past month. So I hope that you did do that because we will be working with them today. So let's take a look at what we're going to accomplish today. For our content, we're going to analyze our language objectives that you worked on this past month. You're also going to select a variety of techniques to help support learners in your lessons. How are we going to do this? You're going to write language objectives, which you already should have done and brought with you. You're going to discuss those language objectives and see if they're clearly defined. That's why you all are working in teams today. And then you are also going to, at the end of the session, work on a categorizing techniques by using a tree map to do that. So this is how you're going to demonstrate the what on the prior screen. So a very quick review. This is definitely what we've been working on the past month. You all have been writing content objectives already up to this point, and my charge for you this past month was to start writing some language objectives to support those content objectives. So definitely having those and making sure that you have them clearly defined, which we will talk about that today more. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a little bit of a processing activity. And the place map consensus is a Kagan structure. Um, I'm going to run through the directions and then we're going to actually do it on, with our teams. Um, each team is provided a place map, which is what the chart paper is in the middle of your tables. Please don't critique the un... <laughs> not that all the sections are evenly divided. Uh, that's not my specialty. Um, your topic today is going to obviously be language objectives. Your, as when I give you the time, a certain amount of time, you're all going to be writing at the same time simultaneously in your chunk on your place map. <coughs> Once time is called, I will give a cue to who will be the first one that shares, and then you're going to round robin the sharing of your language objectives. You're going to discuss each item, and the discussion is going to be, is that a language objective that is clearly defined? And we'll talk about that in just a minute, what it looks like if it's clearly defined. If everybody agrees that that meets the criteria, then your number will go into the middle of your circle, in the middle of your place map, and you'll continue that process. So, everybody has a place map on their table. And everybody will open up the um, pencil container, and everybody needs a different colored marker, please. If you do not have instruction like my librarians, um, my uh, guidance counselors, uh, my principal who's sitting so into hot. a group, um, at this point you don't specifically need a marker because this part you won't be able to do, but during the discussion part then you can jump in on that. But all my teachers, you definitely all need a different colored marker in hand. And then you're going to choose a section on your place mat. I don't, you all get to choose the section. So for example, if I had the purple marker in this next allotted time, I'm going to write my language objectives. Please make sure you number the language objectives as you're writing them. That's going to help with processing the next part of the activity. And then my, whoever had orange, they're writing their language objective. Okay? So that's what we're going to do first. If you brought your language objectives, you can take them out and copy off and copy right into your section. Okay? Can, can somebody um, restate what I'm asking you to do at this point? Can you? You're ready. Right. <laughs> 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 Just that I don't understand. No? Okay. That's, uh, Rebecca Hill. That's right. I'd be happy to restate. Okay. Thank you, Miss Hill. <laughs> Um, you're asking us to each use a different color marker and write our language objectives in the different slices of the pie and number them. Is 
Very good. Very simply. That's what I'm asking you to do. Everybody has a different color marker. You're going to write your objectives, numbering them in your own slice of pie on the placemat. The ones that we brought? Yes, the ones that you brought. Yes, ma'am. Okay? I'm going to give you four minutes for everybody to be writing in their section on the placement. Okay? If, if yes, you don't teach you language, right. you write. Oh, you are back there. there. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 This is, the, uh, this, uh, I mean, this is the what? Study ethnic groups for Spanish. Now you got to do the how. The how. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, find information about, this is the how. Find information about ethnic groups, working groups, or no. What about this? This is what, this is what the students, this is what the students can do. I can yes. describe ethnic groups of the Hispanic. Okay, how are you going to know that they know this? That's what you need to write. Those are your language objectives. How are you going to know they know the content objective? Okay. would be Miss Will. Our Spanish teacher here at Overton High School. And our Academy lead for engineering musical performance. Miss mm -hmm. Ruiz, everything going okay? Excuse me? <laughs> what did you just say? I'm busy. <laughs> Becky Jean, let's see what you're writing. If we can all read it. We're having a lot of fun. I don't know if that's a language objective. I think it is. I've been using it. Becky Jean, English 2, English 1 teacher at Overton High School. Do I want boy? Yes. <laughs> You ready? No. For the interview. They didn't give me You didn't get a piece of the pie? You're not a good man. Why are we not making English? Oh, we're all English. Okay, we already teach you. Awesome. I could teach you, ma'am. Could be right. Ma'am? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought citing evidence as a literary, liter is a literary, as a literacy objective is also a language objective. Okay. Literacy, I'm writing it. literacy and language, aren't they? Are literacy and language the same? Language objective is going to be how how you know they they know your content objective. Yeah. It's kind of the evaluative piece. Yeah, citing it. Yes. Yeah, it's okay.
Whatever the task is to complete the blah blah yes. project, yes. then that's Clearly what you can do because it'll be an overall long range of time, and that is fine. That is acceptable. So now, think of, thinking on that, could you add some to your placement? Okay, good. Thank you. Good question. Your alarm, Bentley. I wanted I wanted to come see you to see if you still knew my what oh, now. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I sure can. Yes, ma'am. So you're like, well, actually, I think it's something I need to look at this again. I think 17. Okay, yeah, because I was going to a question mark. That, that part I need to put. I need to call from the center. Oh, yeah, so, okay. so right 17 is on a post it note. And put um, a, a uh, copy of language objectives. I think the bar and the scope. The bar and the scope preserves something. That's what the bar and the scope is. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Finish up that last piece of writing that you are doing. Now we're going to go to processing your language objectives. So, this is how the consensus part works. You each wrote language objectives in your section of the pie. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go around the table and you're going to read a language objective. So how do we know if it is a clearly defined language objective? What are the four areas that would make up a language objective? What's one? What? what? Reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Very good. So as your teammate reads their language objective, it needs to fall in one of those four categories. So after they read it, you have a discussion as a team. Does it meet one of those four areas? If it does, if it does, then you're going to write the number in the inner circle. So for example, my purple here, I read number one. We all agreed as a group that it was a language objective that was clearly defined, so I wrote it in here. I read number two. As a group, we decided no, it was not a clearly defined objective, so it doesn't go in the inner circle. I read number three didn't match it, so it couldn't go in the inner circle. My orange person read, one, the group decided it didn't match. Two, still didn't. We got to three, we all agreed that it was a clearly defined language objective, so I got to write my number three in the inner circle. So I need there to be some discussion. The person is going to read their language objective then as a group. Is it answering, does it answer the right reading? Does it answer the writing? Does it answer the listening? Does it answer the speaking? If as a group you can't come to a consensus 
raise your hand and say, hey, Melissa, come help us. And then I, I, we can talk through the process. If you all agree that it meets, meets one of those areas, then that person writes that number into the inner circle and you move to the next person. Okay? So we're going to just keep going around and around and around until I call time. The person who's going to get to go first at your group or at your team is the person who has been teaching at Overton the longest. So you need to decide who in your group has been teaching at Overton the longest. When you have decided that person needs to raise their hand. Who's been teaching? Ms. Okay. And here. <laughs> okay. So, very good. So you all are going to start. You're going to read your first language objective as a group. Talk about it. If you all agree, it then goes into the circle. And then go one person to the right, and they'll read the next. Okay? Go ahead and get started. Okay, well, I can start. Now, what I did was I looked at the work. Okay? And uh, I said here the student will construct three types of triangles and explain their relationships. Okay? Then uh, on the I can, I said I can construct. Uh, and then you need to do one at a time. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's your number one. That's my number one. So your number one. So good. Good question. Good question. That's what I want to do. Okay. So it doesn't mean one of the four. Right? Yeah, it has to be reading, no. writing, speaking, or listening. Okay. Now uh, uh, here I can see a lot of writing. And speaking because. But is it listening? This is the problem. All right. So he's the student instructor. Okay, he's gonna do that and explain their relationships. How? So this is this is your objective. But how are they gonna do it? Are they going to tell their partners? Are they gonna tell you? Are they gonna write it out? So that's what you're looking for. You know, okay. One of those things you gotta add, even if you just said in writing. Okay. In writing, we'll have. <laughs> and, um, okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. Or to your partner. partner. Okay. Or, you know, or, um, or if you had them written out, that they can put them in order. Okay. So they, they, they know that it's a written thing. You know, they will read them and put them in order. That would work. I agree. Too. Okay. Does that make sense? You know, at times, uh, you know, you have been doing this. You know how you do it, but when it comes to writing it down, see, that in writing, being specific, you know, has almost made it, you know, uh, unexplainable, because I, I, the students cannot explain what they have done, because I didn't indicate how they are doing it. Yeah? Okay, the other one is student will so that's what you would do. So the learner will read and orally explain the five phases of the web design process. So then that would make it a language objective. Okay? So read your second one. Uh, the learner will use Quizlet to review vocabulary words. Okay, so do they just go on there and on flip the them? It has a picture, it has a, a definition and the word. And there are multiple things they can do. It's, they have flashcards that they start with, and then they have matching activity where they have to match the word and the definitions, and they can drag it, and if it okay. matches, it goes Okay, so let's say um, the learner will use... Um, and then it has games that they can play. Okay, so a whole set, set of, of activities within Quizlet. So think about the learner will match, the learner will define, the learner will... Um, whatever the activities are, you could have all those types of things listed in a row, and then we know that it's more of a manipulation on the computer than it is the hand thing. Because you could eventually take those things off the computer and create that as a hands-on activity as well. But because you're doing it online, then think about, okay, the learner's going to match 
vocabulary words that learners are going to. Um, it could even be quiz orally a, a neighbor. So they actually speaks the word to them too. So there you go. They're going to listen to the words. So they have headphones. Oh, you, you are meeting lots of language and you didn't even know it. Well, the first one seemed like it said they will identify. Read the first one again. Students will identify the dramatic statements. Okay, so it seems that like they're, when they're creating the dramatic statements, that, that, that's the how. So I think that that was qualified, but I'm not so sure about the second one because it doesn't say how they're going to identify. What's the what? What is that kind of high representation? In the English class, it's kind of hard to separate the what and how sometimes. Well, it's language, the prepositional phrase is language, but it's the how that they communicate it that makes it a language. How they communicate that they've learned it. Yeah, how they communicate that they've learned it. Okay, so, okay. I'm saying just I'm adding a little bit to say what they're actually, how, it, how are they going to show you how they're doing yeah. Well, I see, yeah. see like, okay. if I wrote it on the board, I would write it like that. I don't call it that, the names, I just call it the what and the how. So am I necessarily doing it the wrong way? Yeah, the how is the language objective and the what is the content objective. Okay. What, do, what are they supposed to learn? That's the content. And how do they show it? How do they show it? That's the language. Yeah, so if she just asked after they provide by telling us the action that we want to do, yeah. Like this one right here is differentiated between the two religions, and so I put my how in my thing, my language is saying how they're going to show that. So I put it all together in Uh oh. This might be a Kate Middleton moment. I'm showing a little spin. I like the whale run. Yeah, that is cool. That's my favorite one. So you, when you say define, you have to say in writing? Define in writing? Uh, yeah. Or orally, or however you want to do that. So you have to write, understand and explain in writing? Because there they didn't write it, but it's still in the circle. Yeah, because are you explaining it to a partner orally? Or are you well, it says understand and explain, and it went in, and it doesn't say orally or anything. So, when so our question is, do they have to say orally? I would. Or I would. That specific. I would. Okay, I have described the meaning and tone. The language content seems to be less appropriate. And of course, this is geared towards the L's. I would just make it simple to talk. There's always going to be writing. Like right now, we're all writing, we're talking really seriously. Right? There's always a lot of evidence, but at the end of the day, like what she showed, she showed the main thing that she wants to get out of this, right? To have a discussion about language objectives. So I would just narrow it down to one thing like that. And then So I said write a rough draft of your essay using specific details and examples. Using the handout provided, take Cornell notes. Now take, I didn't say write. I believe that's understood. It's written. And then write, sen write sentences that contain context clues for each of the different points. Okay, so we're going to put... One, two, and three, right? All of them. Or yes, yeah. Two and two. No, but I was making my turn up on this one. Oh, you need orange. Well, I was doing two. Oh, okay. No, I didn't. I was doing mine. I'm just here. <laughs> yeah, where's orange? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Yay, Lacey. Now, if I just had to write a rough draft, I mean... Can we put blue on there somewhere so we'll have to write it?
read and read from a book, then that's what I need to see. I don't need to see. So you have to specify. Students will share with a partner um, about their ethnic group. Da, 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 da. That will be speaking. Yes. Okay. Um, students will read an excerpt on Hispanic world culture um, from whatever the name of the book is. Mm -hmm. And then that would be your language. So you're actually completely right, making sure you've got that right. These are good. We're just, we have to make some extension to it. Okay? Any other? You, so did nobody else have it? Right oh, okay, keep going. Keep going. Well, well, it's not great, but that's what we're doing. You know what we say, right? We don't want to be correct. We do it correctly, and then that's how it is. Yeah, I don't mind. I have no problem with that. So, I'm going to do So, what, what did you all glean from this? What, did everybody have um, clearly defined language objectives, or did we not? Were there some that maybe had brought up more discussion points than others? It seems to be a matter of semantics. If you have the writing or the ex orally explaining type of things in there to make clear. Um, I mean, here I can, you know, all I had to do is change the word. I can identify and speak to Ms. Holly, tell Ms. Holly the topic signs. So I can orally identify the topic sentence. Yes. I mean, it's, but, but that's also showing the students how they're going to do that. With just that one, they don't know how they're going to do that. It could be writing. It could be orally. So but that's that, that's there. And that, that's, well, yes, but they still, the student needs to know their expectation. No, 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 it's okay. Shouldn't the goal be that they have multiple modes in which they can do that? So then it would just say, I can speak, write, or, but that's everything. Do you know what I mean? Like, in my class, they should be writing about a topic, discussing it if they feel comfortable, and sharing, like, well, even if they don't feel comfortable, they should still have opportunities to discuss a topic. And as teachers, we have to mold that. But that I can identify the topic sentence in a given passage is that content. It's what they're supposed to be doing. But, so we still have to tell them how they're going to end up doing that. That's that extra piece. Now, you can do the how within the what by adding, I can orally identify the topic sentence in a, but they or I can write. I mean, that's what, that's what I'm saying. It's like, that's I mean, I'm not sure I understand why it's so important that I put orally, because we actually did, they identified it to me orally, mm -hmm. they wrote it down, they put it on the board. But it is understanding, like, this is just trying to say is that making it clear to the students, like, like, you know it, and you know you're going to do it. But if they're doing it, to me it says but, it's clear. But it's and then if I come into the classroom and I say, um, so what are you guys working on today? And they say, just topic sentence, that, that, that's not a very clear. They could actually look at the board and say, today we're actually, I'm talking to my, my neighbor to let them identify that. So our kids should be able to say our lesson plan. Your kids should be able to know what the expectation is right. in class. But that would be like a daily schedule. Like, oh, we're going to discuss it, then we're going to work with partners. That has nothing to do with, like, my standards. Well, that, discussing and partners is the how of what you're going to do with your what, which is a language objective. And it doesn't fall in an agenda type thing. Activities are what falls in an agenda. Right, I understand that. But that's what I'm going over. Is like, today we're working on main topic. We're going to do these three things. But I'm not, like, here. I need you to know how to state my standards. Well, no, but these aren't standards. These I know, are but the this is pretty much, they're going to step through the students. Do you address these objectives at the beginning of class? I mean, I say what we're going to do and what we're going to cover, but the fact of the matter is expecting my kids to be able to put that off to somebody who just wanders in, I think is sort of arbitrary. But... That, but that's part of it. They need to know that it's the roadmap of no, so I they know. That. I get that. It's just the ability to quote it off rather than be like, I know that we're covering topic and that's not enough. Like, that's sort of silly to me. The kids have how many classes a day? They have people who got to stuff out of all the time. It's like, but they don't have to quote it. No, it's like it's that that if somebody well, comes to them and asks, ask, people are ready to do that before. Like, oh, we're going to come in the classroom and ask your kids But it's shit. more as a roadmap. So, so, like, if I did come in and they were struggling and I said, 
is there something on the board that might be able to help you tell me? And that's visually up there as a roadmap to help them with that understanding. It, it's also that visual piece. A lot of times all we do is say, 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 say things, and a lot of our kids need to see it written also. And instead of you all always doing the objectives at the beginning of class, you could actually have a student read what, what you're going to do for them. Which that helps buy that ownership into why that is also an important It's not the having them. Like, I like the way it works. I just disagree with having another thing that I have to hope my kids get so that I can get graded on somebody else's scale. That has nothing to do with it. And um, we were just discussing that the higher the level of class goes, like Samantha and I teach some high level Honors. classes too, and we have very little real estate in our room for putting all these things up. And I mean, really, we, we have very little real estate. Mm -hmm. We also have to have evidence of student workup. And by the time we have, to, I have kids that are showing multiple layers of thinking right now. And I expect multiple layers of thinking. So by the time I write all of these things, my expectations are that they will do in this language content. By, by the time we list all those things on the board, I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, it's an enormous list. When my child tells me what she did in class, and she did tell me what she's doing in her class, mm -hmm. her class, for today or yesterday, whenever she, she came up with her song track, there are so many layers of oral and written and, uh, but to put all of what my child said was involved in just her homework on the board for this one activity, and I know it's not the only activity she's doing in class. Yeah, it, look at it more as a general language objective. Of as an assessment. So, <laughs> so let's say you're having them read an excerpt. Wait, let me, okay, yes. So, if you were to come in at a time when that part of the class is not being discussed, it's I posted think, at least that she knows that's where you're going to get but, to. But if you were to ask my children where we're going, I have, I tend to have a, there are many things going on in my car class, and depending on what we're doing, they may not know every single little part. I mean, it's not going to match. They don't know the little part, but they do need to know the general. They all need to know the general. At the end of class, I believe their expectations. Okay, may I finish? Yes. I don't believe that my children can necessarily put together the languages on the board, and 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 I think they understand what's going on in class with. And they're not EL students necessarily. Most of them are not. But I don't think that they don't know what's going on in the classroom. But I think if I was evaluated by an evaluator from the state, I would be just. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I think that I'm confused as to how much is supposed to be on the board and how much they're supposed to know and supposed to be able to reiterate to anyone who walks into my room. Because there are core standards, and then there are state standards, because I have English two class, then there are language content, and then content objectives, and then there's ACT, and then there's my agenda, and they're having to remark on all of these things, and I think that's a lot for a student to be aware of. So in a few minutes, I'm going to have if there's any other clarifying things that need to be addressed in the language objectives, just want to please say no. So if you still have some questions to have cleared up, write that and then we can set up a follow-up. It's not every little discussion. Well, I, just yes. think it, I think it's a lot for a student to, to know what to be responsible for if someone were to be Like that meeting that we did? Right. We had a whole PowerPoint, but at the end of the that, day, we assessed you on one thing. That's true. So, and that's what it is. It's not every little thing that you do. It's really actually saying because of my choice of field. And so, I understand, even though I do have, there's a lot that 
I think if you get caught up in, in every single detail of your lesson, then that's, but it's the overall, how are you going to know that they know that? Focus on the like the big picture. Don't worry about those little things. Well, I want to support her, but you and I want to support S I P S I L P, and I, but I want to support the information. Okay, team. let's bring it back together. I want to support everybody. I'm sorry, I didn't get around to everybody in the group. Um, but hopefully, you are able to have some conversation around the objectives that were taught in, hopefully most of you are sitting within similar content area and you are kind of able to have those discussions about what, what you are teaching, um, making sure you have a reading, writing, listening, speaking aspect in there. My purpose for doing this activity was, of course, one, to see that you had been writing language objectives this past month, but more so, to, to have you all start having conversations with each other about what you are teaching. Because when I'm not here, your neighbor is the person that you can go to and say, hey, it, does this sound like a good language objective? And they can help you work through that when I'm not here every day. Or you can go to Privet or to Gooch. And they, they can help give you some insight. But you all live here and live in the now all the time. So I wanted you to be able to have conversations together to be able to make those distinctions between is it a clearly defined language objective and is it not. If you still have questions or concerns about language objectives, and I know there are some, there are some post-it notes in the blue containers. If you all will write your question on that, Please put your name on it because I can't do follow-up if I don't know who the question belongs to. And just before you leave today, make sure I get that post-it note and I will set up a time to, to come with you, work with you, um, cre create some language objectives that fit with your content that you are teaching. The last part we're going to look at is the last three um, features of uh, lesson prep. And they are supplementary materials, adaptation of content, and meaningful activities. Your supplementary materials are those things we as teachers bring to our classroom to help with our students' learning. Adaptation of content are those things that make the content comprehensible to our students. So maybe what type of tools might we use to make that content accessible to our students. And then obviously meaningful activities. What are we having them do that are meaningful that also include language practice? Sometimes these two features can be put together to create that meaningful activity. So what I'd like you all to do is there is a baggie of cards on everybody's table. I'd like one person to take them out. Um, some of you still have the post-it note headings in your, in your um, baggies. If you don't, will somebody in the group take a post-it note and write supplementary materials on one of them, adaptation on a second, and meaningful activities on a third? I did not put the headings in your um, containers. Once you have those headings labeled, what I'd like you to do is talk with your groups through the cards and place them where you think as a group they go. So for example, Realia is in there. My EL teachers, I know you know what Realia is. Realia is that real object. So would that fall under supplementary, adaptation, or meaningful activities? Supplemental, very good. So talk through them and place them under the appropriate categories. Because it's something as a teacher we use to teach the lesson. It, it, it's like, okay, so what are we we're using these? Yeah. And then we're like putting these under these. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do this. 
you're, you're talking through and, and finding find the category, which category do you need to say that it takes you a lot yeah. with your group. Huh? You do a lot for what you're working on now. Yeah. There. Pictures. Reality. <laughs> Or would this? Well, I guess that's an activity. For what? Six sizes. Oh, activity. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm not. Yeah. I'm yeah. Reality yeah. 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 was meaningful to me, but it's not just supplementary. So. I think these are supplementary. I'm gonna stay out of that. Mm -hmm. I think this is. Well, we know this goes here. Mm -hmm. do you, what do you think about graphic? Yeah, I mean it's all fine. Okay, so many manipulatives mm -hmm. that would be I can See, would this be would this be uh, would that be I have a card table I had to leave in Private. Dallas for the moment. Poker. Take a shot. We'll delete okay. all this. We'll edit all this. Yes, please. <laughs> please just let it This will all be edited. I think, I think demonstrations would go in meaningful activities. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Okay. What is the one you covered up by a It's two of two. Oh, okay. Oh, Adaptations. That depends on what it's the teacher demonstrating. Uh, meaningful activities. That's things that they're doing, right? Activities that are authentic to learning. Did you like the last year? They had to add a little bit extra. It was like CTLD. They were adding a little bit extra. Alrighty. I'm not sure what help it did, but you know, whatever. <laughs> They can't spell, can they? Well, it might be activities, maybe real life experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Making it meaningful. Yeah. We're awesome. Okay, so this isn't happening, so maybe that goes Or does this go down? Which one? Uh, no, because I think they have, this, they have to have the background knowledge that probably knowledge is here. And then, uh, then we know, we have the knowledge and then we connect it with activities. The only reason I put it on activities is because it's like the experience. So it's going to follow creating Sarah's choices the reality confused me, but she had arguments for the I learned that in EO training. It's going to be fun to get Just more drawings. Yeah, right. I not I Oh, and I had to listen to it. Except for you two. Yeah. I couldn't handle you two. But the pop song just was sitting here with Yeah. Adaptations are tools that we need to buy students access. So, make like the whole song that's in the is that an actual tool that is an activity that you have? No, no, no. Yes. 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 No, that it should go over there. Outlines are a tool, a tool to help students access the content. So, so are graphic. Uh -huh. Yes. And demonstrations. 
Um, demonstrations, we thought it would be depending on the type on of demonstration. student demonstrating. Or That's what we didn't know. It could be a student or a teacher, but with a demonstration, do you have to provide materials for a demonstration? Somebody does. So there's going to be materials. So it would move over into the supplemental materials for your demonstrations because you have to provide things to them to accomplish. You or I. Yes. And you ate them. Oh, I should have been You did it for what? Yes. We studied. We were able to not to number the sequence. Uh-huh. And they're here in danger. So one of the examples was like the spiral. Pineapple. Is that in the dimension cut? No. 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 That's okay, I had never heard of it. I'm just going to pretend. It's spiral, but it's fine. something that once you know about it. You love it. I want to know about it. I want to know about it. I think I heard about this, but it caught me out. I had never heard of it, but it's like a bad thing that's really big. Yeah, I think yeah, my math teacher told me about it. Yeah, yeah. And it falls in nature, like you said, the number three in nature. Ooh, it gives me the evil genius about Jesus. The example was a pineapple. The so pineapples happened to be on sale that week, so I bought one for each of the two classes. So I think there was a cute graphic online that shows it was really animated to show that, and then, of course, the culmination of the lesson. We ate the lesson. We ate, we ate the pineapple. So wait, what about a pineapple? Like, it's the if you look, I forgot what you call those little segments, but it's the number five, eight, and thirteen. Like there are five going this way, and those three are people not Check and see how those numbers. Check and see how y'all do. Oh, thank you. Right. So we had hands on manipulatives. We had realia. We had pictures and visuals. And multimedia. So, you know, I totally, really, the readers are supplementary materials that isn't really adapting what we've got. Okay. Okay, you should be checking now. I gave you, of course, the cheat sheet, what we as teachers do. We make you struggle, and then we give you the answers. Oh. On this sheet of paper that I gave you, the tree map, above supplementary materials, you might want to write. I think one goes These are things we as oh, teachers yeah. bring to the classroom oh, yeah. to help the students with understanding. Now, that doesn't mean students can't use those materials, but it's something we use to help get our point across in the classroom. Um, everywhere from the manipulatives to pictures and visuals, um, other related literature brought in. The adaptation of content is the tools that we provide students to access the content. Because some of you had a um, question about the graphic organizers and outlines. Them by themselves probably are not meaningful activities. Now, if they take some of the supplemental materials you use and the outline or graphic organizer that you provided them to help them complete a meaningful activity, then that would work. But a graphic organizer all by itself or an outline all by itself really isn't a meaningful activity. Your meaningful activities are those things, what are characteristics of meaningful activities? The fourth one down, make sure you provide language practice, oral and written, connecting it to real life experiences. Example back here, a pineapple was brought to class, which was the real thing by that teacher. So they had a supplementary material, and then it was connected into an activity that provided a talking about that pineapple and what connections it had to what they were reading. And, and that, that's how all those things fit together. And they connected it to that real life. They actually, and then they got to eat the pineapple at the end of class. So experiences, providing them those experiences. Okay. So this is just a summary of, of these last three features of the um, lesson prep. If I can have somebody 
take all the cards, mix them all up, and stick them back in the baggie. That would be fabulous, because there's two more groups that have to go through this. So if you will stir them up, and you can put your headings in the baggie with it, that would be great. And then I would just like to provide you some okay, think we'll about some questions as we get ready to finish based on this. One is as you're starting to plan your next lessons, what is one supplemental activity you, or material you could actually add to that lesson? Is there something you hadn't thought about that you could use and bring to class to help support? Also, is there any way you can adapt your content? Maybe provide a graphic organizer a le or a leveled study guide. Maybe you haven't done that yet. Also, what's a meaningful activity the students can engage in during that class period? So just some thinking questions as you're starting to plan future lessons in your classrooms. So very quickly, we analyzed our language objectives, and you selected a variety of techniques. You wrote, so as our how, you actually wrote language objectives on your placemats. You discussed them in your groups and defined, decided if they were defined clearly. And then you actually manipulated a tree map to categorize a variety of techniques. So I will be back October 24th is my next session with you all. We will move into building background, a continued homework, continue writing those language objectives, please. If you still need some clarifying about language objectives, make sure you write on a post-it note and give me your name. But the piece that I want you to bring is next month when I come back, I want you to bring a piece of student work that demonstrates your how. So let's say you have a language objective in a class period and the kids are producing something through reading, writing, listening, or speaking. I want you to bring that piece in our next session because I'd like to have those posted so we can make connections between what, you're, what, what and how you're asking and then actually the product from that. Okay. And the last piece that I'd like you to do before you leave is the reflective sheet and the yellow folder is in Privet's hands so make sure on the way out the door you deposit it please um, at the bottom where it has the rating please be honest that rating is for me it makes me evaluate myself after at last session after each session last time um, not everybody did it, so if you will, please, that would be great. I think there's a note. If not, wave your hand back. I would, yes, definitely. Um, and you put both your names fabulous. Yes. This is